So I like to call this segment working with wood. No. No. I like to call this segment playing with wood. Also no. Hey folks, I'm Woody, howdy, howdy, howdy. Acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it's a Disney reference, oh my God. All right, gang, so let's uh, deal with the Finland birch that comes in the kit. Uh, these particular pieces are the horizontal tail ribs, but this uh, would apply to any of the Finland birch wood throughout the build. One of the, uh, one of the comments we get often about our uh, wood, it's all cut on our uh, CNC router. And so as far as fit and all that, it's very consistent, but we get, we get gripes about this tape. And this tape right here is a double-sided tape we use to hold the material in place while it's being cut. And while I am sympathetic because it is, it's a pain. Do it while you're watching Easy. your favorite sitcom or reality TV, or while you're watching our a next video. video. <laughs> okay, so we'll go through and uh, finish pulling all the tapes on this. My preference is actually to go through and varnish these. I think it's easier and cleaner to varnish them off the airplane. So there's a couple of key points there. Uh, we'll have a lot better control. You won't have uh, varnish splatter going everywhere, dripping on the floor or making a huge mess. Um, so we're gonna prep these by giving them an initial sanding, kind of cleaning up any of the, the fuzz from the router, uh, the router bit. Splinters, whatever. Yeah, clean them up, make them look nice. You can even give these outside edges a little bit of a radius and that will help the fabric kind of contour those and look really, really nice later. Despite what you may have heard on the internet, we always trim these from the hinge point, uh, meaning that is our constant. We're gonna use that as our constant. Never ever trim the hinge point, always trim the leading edge of the horizontal or the trailing edge of the elevator and rudder, okay? We always wanna use the hinge point as that common point uh, because that is where all the ribs are sized from, is down that, that constant tube. So if you need to do any trimming or anything like that, any reshaping, always do that on the leading edge, never at the joint, okay? That'll make your life a whole lot easier. We do use- I have a question. Go ahead. Do you trim them to fit prior to varnishing or do you trim them to fit after varnishing? That's a good question. You can do either or. So right now I'm gonna throw these down on the table and we're gonna get the varnishing them. If you do a lot of trimming later, you can rely on two things, either where it's gonna bond with the high saw We'll seal that up. Anywhere that we're going to bond, we want to abrade. So we want to break that surface with some coarse sandpaper. And so depending on how aggressive you get there, you may need to come back and touch that up with just a little bit of varnish, but it wouldn't take much. Okay. If you're cautious and you're careful, it'll go super easy, okay? Perfect. Furthermore, uh, you can see this guy, maybe you can see, this has just a little bow in it. It's a little twisted. So this comes from Finland. It actually is a Finland birch and we get it here in dry Idaho, and that wood reacts once it arrives here. And we can have this for you know a few months at a time sitting on the shelf, and it goes through our climate changes and humidity and moisture and, and heat will all change the, the, the properties of this plywood. And then it may come to you in a coastal area, you could be in a dry area too, you could be in a, a very humid area, and the wood is going to respond to that. You can end up with ribs that are twisted or, or bent, uh, sometimes even if they're just taped together too tight, we'll see uh, where that will actually cause them to wave a, to little. Wave a little bit. We call it 51%. Uh, so you're gonna actually take care of this as part of the build, but just take them out. As you start working with it, you can actually twist these quite a ways, which is why we love Finland Birch. If you did that to an aluminum rib, gone. It would just be distorted forever. So you can take this, it has a bit of a memory. So sometimes you have to kind of push it past that memory and let it, uh, let it kind of settle back in, see where it's at, and just kind of start straightening it. One of the things I like to do is actually clasp the, uh, the rib with my forefinger and my middle finger, and then I'll actually start bending using the far side of my palm and my thumb extended to kind of help give a little bit of 
a motion to that rib. So give it a little bit of a range of where your hand is exactly. at to, uh, as to where you're bending. Yeah, if I come in and just start bending right here, I'm going to snap the wood. It, it is, uh, you know, it's a five ply, it's pretty resolute, but in reality, you're still going to have to be real careful with it. Here, let me straighten this up a little bit. And I'm just sighting down this. I'm, I'm looking down the rib and sighting it. I'll flip it over and do the same to the other side. And I'll just give a little bend or a little curl here and there. Sometimes I'll hold the front of it, kind of twist the back and kind of get the results I'm looking for. And once I'm happy with how straight it is, I'm gonna set it aside, okay? Chances are, as we varnish these, they're gonna move again. Chances are, just, just sitting for 15 minutes, they'll move again. Um, it, don't, don't straighten these up, set them overnight and expect to come back the next day and find them flat. Um, don't bother trying to weight them down, it doesn't work, we tried. So, you know, here we're looking pretty sweet. That's uh, nice and straight. So we'll continue straightening these. We're gonna take and lay these materials out on this table here. So we're gonna go through and lay all these out on our stickers. How as part close, of our, how far, doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, you just don't want them touching. If it's hot, you're gonna find that your varnish is gonna flash very, very quickly. And so as you come back to, uh, let's say your first one that you started on, you did all your ribs, you're gonna come back to this one. It may be flashed enough that you could flip it over and go to the next coat, but always give it time so you don't end up with funny little ridges in there. So why do you have a hair dryer? Uh, I only used this once <laughs> as a hair dryer, and you can see what happened. It was tragic. Uh, it's not a hair dryer, it's a heat gun. Much, much hotter. If you absolutely can't get it straight, you can try some uh, applying some heat carefully. You don't want to burn the wood, you don't want to break down the adhesive bond between the layers of plywood. And sometimes heating it can help it become a little more pliable. Okay, that seems to have done Worked. the trick. Yeah. There, here's another one. <laughs> As you can see, the straightening process doesn't take a long time, but it's worth uh, getting it right, right out of the gate. Like I said, these may move again after the fact, after you varnish them or when you go to even put them in. You may have to do a last minute straighten right before you bond them. So there's a couple of notes here. The kit includes some stiffener material, which is uh, just under a half inch wide, and we would cut those to length. Um, some people have had good results uh, bonding those in place prior to installing them in the, in the horizontal. Uh, that is an option. Um, not having them in there, you have to go back through later and clamp them in place and glue them in place at that point. So builder's choice, you can do it either way. So let's talk about our varnish kit for just a minute. In the, in the covering kit, you will have the polyfiber epoxy varnish. So it's a three part system. You have the varnish, the catalyst to harden and the reducer to thin it out. On the first round, we're going to mix two parts of the epoxy, one part of the catalyst and then uh, we're going to let that sit for 30 minutes, called an induction period. We stir it up really well, let that sit before we do anything with it. So a lot of times, might, might make more sense to go ahead and mix that and then do your rib straightening. Then come back and add your reducer right before you go to apply it. The first coat, we want to cut that by 50%. And what that 50% does is over thins it. It allows it to really penetrate into the wood and you get good saturation then the next coat is gonna build really well on top of that. If you simply go through and put a full coat on there, it's just gonna build on the surface, nothing gets inside the actual wood grain. Without reducing. That's correct, without reducing. And all of this information on the polyfiber system is actually on their website as well, so you can go to their manual on their website and, and read these kinds of things also. Absolutely. And we encourage that. Yeah, always reference the manual. Yep. The, uh, the, in that case, the polyfiber manual, and it's free to download, so yep. super easy to get. Um, we're going to recommend you use a graduated cup or a scale. Graduated cup means that the scale is on here for you. You could measure out two ounces of varnish and one ounce of the catalyst and then figure out, okay, I want another ounce and a half of reducer. All those ounce marks are on there, making it really, really easy. The other thing you can do is there is a, a graduated measurement here 
of two to one. And so that makes it easy, yep. So you just go two, two parts of that one, two parts of that one, and it gives you your two to one automatically. And then you have to figure out how many ounces that is and, and then do your 50% reduction. Your second coat will only be reduced about 25%. Um, so you want a, a thicker viscosity to build up on the outside of that rib. Sometimes, depending on how, how much uh, saturation you get, you may need to put a third coat on. Most of the time it can be done in two, but if you need to put a third coat on, if you don't feel like it's really got enough protection on there, definitely put the third coat on. It's harder to put on after covering, so remember that. Okay. How, how do you know if it's fully saturated, if you feel like you've gotten enough? You'll tell by, just by looking at it. Uh, you should have a sheen on there. It should be somewhat glossy. Uh, if you have good coverage, but not enough build on the outside of that, you'll see where you'll have dry spots. It'll look dry to you. Patchy. Kind yep, of. patchy. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, these cups are available at your local home centers or at your auto body supply stores. And they are, like I said, referred to as graduated cups. You'll need a couple of brushes. These are just cheap uh, chip brushes that you throw away when you're done. Don't try and rinse them, don't bother. They're cheap enough. You can pick up a box of them at your favorite discount tool store and buy a box, use them, pitch them. This stuff is nasty, like I said, you're gonna want a respirator. Make sure it's an organic respirator that is intended for paint type chemicals, uh, solvents, things like that, that will protect you from breathing this stuff. Uh, full face shield wouldn't be a bad idea, definitely goggles. Uh, if any of this stuff splatters, it's just, it becomes really, really nasty. If you're really wild and crazy, it'll get in your hair, not a problem. And then sandpaper would be the last thing. So we're gonna take just a couple minutes here using some 220 basic, just woodworking sandpaper. We're gonna take and just knock these edges down. And if you put just a tiny bit of a radius across there, that helps to kinda, you know, smooth everything out, but it, it kinda helps the fabric span that a little better uh, later on in the build. So this is a pretty simple process. It doesn't take long. Like I said, if you have any fuzzies, knock those out. What happens is varnish, as it cures, and it doesn't dry, it cures. It's actually a chemical reaction any of those fuzzies, it turns that into a razor and it just becomes a saw blade for anything that passes over it, whether that's your skin or fabric or uh, in the case of the wings, any tubing or wiring or anything that you're gonna pass through the wing, it just becomes brutal on that equipment. So um, take the time now to get these good and smooth and it will pay dividends later. So we're gonna wrap this and we'll check back in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're all sanded. We have everything laid out on our stickers. We feel good, we look good. PPE, personal protective equipment. You need gloves when you're handling this stuff. Epoxy is corrosive to the skin, so you don't wanna handle that. Uh, I would recommend using a mask. We're not going to use masks today so we can talk and you can understand us. So just know that if we were doing this off camera, we would be using masks. Okay? The other thing we should probably talk about is ventilation. Ventilation is important. If you can work outside, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you can open doors, windows in the garage, that's fantastic. Um, do not do this in a confined area. Uh, the vapors and the gases are harmful. So you, uh, you don't want to be breathing it. You don't want to be exposed to it. Uh, don't do it in your basement, okay? It seems like it more, might be more convenient. Uh, don't bring them in the house and let them sit overnight. Just, wives don't like that. Wives don't like that. Okay, so let's start by mixing. We're gonna go Two to one, uh, and you can do however you want to there, babe. I'm just using the ounces. That's fine, that's fine. Oof. Oof. So, <laughs> the best advice I could give you here is to not mix too much. You need to remember we're gonna cut this with reducer after it's all said and done. So three ounces may not sound like a lot, but it's a lot. And it's gonna go a long way. And it's gonna go a long way. So, uh, I tend to under mix what I'm gonna need, and I'll mix more if I need it. Small. Mix in small quantities, small batches, this stuff will last. Uh, the pot life on this particular epoxy varnish is pretty long, so you can work with it for quite a while without having to worry about it flashing, but you don't want to waste it. You don't want to get to the end and realize, oh, I've varnished everything I had on the table here, but now I don't know what to do with the other four ounces that I accidentally mixed up. So go in small quantities, okay? Did you decide how much you're gonna start with? I'm gonna start with two ounces of this. Okay. Should I do more? No. Okay, so you go two ounces of that, you need one ounce of the catalyst. That's three. Okay, and then one and a half ounces of that, that's gonna be four, four and a half, half ounces. It's that's quite a bit. too much for this? It, we'll see, we'll find out. I don't wanna find out, I want you to tell me. Oh my gosh, that looks like so much. I made a mess. 
I just want to let the world know that it's really hard for me to let her do this. <laughs> I just want to get my hands on and, uh, and do everything. You can't. I'm, I'm helping. Wow. Okay. Do we stir now and stir then? Stir now. Yeah. And then we will come back later and add the reducer. Is there a specific amount of time you should stir? It well mixed, but I typically mix for at least 90 to 120 seconds. So oh, a minute and a half, a two minutes. Yep. Scraping the sides as you go, mm -hmm. making sure you're getting the stick across the bottom of the cup. Mm -hmm. You just want to incorporate everything that's in that cup and make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Too much catalyst will not make it go off faster. It affects the, uh, the ratio and you may end up with a product that never cures. Mm. Um, so you got to be careful with getting your ratios absolutely correct. Epoxy based products are really sensitive to the, the chemical uh, science. And so make sure it's mixed thoroughly, make sure it's the right ratios. This reminds me of making a cake. <laughs> making sure everything's mixed properly. That's right. Where you can uh, kind of use that fluctuation would be in reducing it. So the reducing, like I said, you would do that first one at 50%, but in reality, that second and third coats that you're gonna need to do, um, you, can, you can use less reducer and based on your, your temperature outside, would you know how much you want it to flow, how fast you want it to flash, you can use reducers for, the, for determining all that. All right, looks good to me. We're gonna let that do what's called an induction. So that induction period for this product is 30 minutes. So we're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes, come back and reduce it, and we'll check back with you shortly. I'm looking at my watch like I'm wearing a watch. <laughs> We all know I'm setting my timer on my cell phone, okay? If you're watching this, you're lucky because we got to skip the 30 minute <laughs> induction time and uh, that's not how the real world works, just so, so you know. you the magic television. Yeah. So we're gonna go with an ounce and a half of reducer mm -hmm. to thin this down. Mm -hmm. She needs me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're gonna go with an ounce and a half. Let me show you a little trick. Yeah. If you pour from this side. You've got more time. That's right. A little more control. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Stir. Always replace, yeah, go ahead and stir that up real good. Another uh, another minute maybe. Okay. Always replace your caps so that doesn't evaporate. Again, we're going to use chip brushes. And the technique that we're going to use is real simple. If you literally take this out of there and just touch it, touch the brush to the wood, it's just going to soak it right in. You don't have to do a lot of brushing back and forth and, and getting real crazy. You'll end up with a lot of splatter you're gonna end up with a lot of drips on the bottom side that you're gonna have to deal with. So use, use some control, just take a, you know, saturate the brush with, with some varnish out of the cup and just bring it down and just touch it and just gently move it around and keep everything well within the control of where the area that you're working. All right, baby, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. You have a brush, I have a brush. If you wanna just set it right there in the middle. We'll share these. Okay, we're gonna come in and literally just touch it down. And you'll be able to see the wood kind of turn to a little bit of an amber color. And you just want to make sure everything gets coated. And I'm working just slowly so I don't end up splattering and I don't end up getting excess where I don't want it. Do your center pieces, your center lightning holes. This will give you a chance to kind of look at the back of the rib and see if you have any drips happening. Anything that's out of control that you want to deal with now. Okay. So since we're being so cautious with splatter and whatnot, would it be easier or is it possible for this to be sprayed on? That's a good question. Uh, it, the manual actually says you can reduce it this 50% for all your coats and spray it on. What we've found is that spraying is going to use a lot more material. You're going to atomize that material out of the gun and you're going to go through probably twice as much varnish as just brushing it on. As far as controllability, uh, you're going to get nice even coats. So if this was something that you were wanting to leave exposed, uh, a spray coat would, would look really, really nice when it's done but be prepared to have additional material because it's, it, it's gonna go mostly in the air. <laughs> that makes sense. And so I, I noticed that you did inside the holes and all that, it seems like you really wanna get it all covered. What's the purpose in putting this varnish on there? Yeah, the varnish is um, 
is a sealant. It goes on the wood and the reason we reduce it is so it penetrates the wood deeply and doesn't just become a surface seal. Um, our wood, if properly sealed, will give you a lifetime durability. We've actually had some wood ribs that we've taken to Oshkosh where they have literally been in the rain <laughs> for you know a whole week a at a week, time. Yeah. The whole idea of, of varnishing is to seal it. So if you take care of your ribs, they'll take care of you. Yep. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. It's just a little more of the same of this. We'll uh, check for flashing at that point when this is you know, dry to the touch. We can go ahead and flip it over, do the other sides. We'll uh, get these all varnished and we'll see you for the second coat. Bye. We have... Uh, a rookie mistake. A rookie mistake. <laughs> what happened? Uh, clearly we mixed way too much. Okay, <laughs> so we started with four and a half ounces. And this is just to give you reference, not to dog Heather, but this is just to give you reference. We used about an ounce and a half. We have three ounces left in the cup. And so we mixed up way too much. In that case, have some other ribs, you know, if you do mix up too much, we, we've got our other elevator ribs and stuff that we can varnish. Uh, so we'll whip that stuff out and get that done. You could also go and, and varnish parts of your wings if you got some of those areas ready, or the other wood on your tail sections, your, your floorboards, anything like that. Have those things ready. Have something else ready subsequent that in you case. could, yeah, just in case. So you can jump in and, and use that up. Uh, this would probably take two days to fully cure in that cup and you don't want to do that. So it's a little cool in here where we're working today. So we're going to let this sit overnight and we'll check back uh, tomorrow and we'll keep, uh, keep varnishing with our second and possibly third coats. And we'll let you know how that goes. But for now, we'll see you tomorrow. Awesome. Okay, we're back for round two of varnishing. You may have noticed that we uh, have some extra ribs out here that we may or may not have varnished with the extra varnish that we had. It happens. Before we start the second coat, you might want to take the opportunity to see if you have any grain pop, if you want to knock any of that down, sand it. Um, it kind of just all depends on what kind of finish you want on your ribs, but we can take a look at that and see if that's something we want to do. So it looks like we have some ribs that are maybe not flat anymore after we varnished. What, is it, what do you do about that? Yeah, uh, legit, you're going to have that happen. The varnish can cause the wood to move a little bit as it cures, and so we, we can take this time right now between coats Try and straighten things up a little bit and just work a little bit of time. Just kind of give it a little, little massage, little massage, little massage. Kind of like that. Okay. And that's all going to work so nice. If you, uh, if you are working on straightening them out and you end, end up cracking one like that, uh, probably don't try and fix that. Get a hold of us. Uh, I know where I can find an extra one or two ribs. So right back. we're going to go grab some. All right, and that fast, we're back with fresh ribs and uh, replacing those that we broke. So uh, now we'll have to play catch up on the coatings with those couple of pieces that uh, we're redoing. Um, but that's, that's easy enough, so we'll keep rocking here. Let's mix up some varnish. We do have the induction period that we'll have to wait for, and we'll go from there. Be right back. Okay. So you can see her measuring up to the uh, first graduation line there. Today she's a little a little shy about adding too much. So we're mixing up just nice a very, very small quantity first. All right, so we've inducted the, uh, the varnish. Now we can reduce it. We're not going quite as far with the reduction this time because we want this now to build. The first one we, we dilute 50% to actually get it to penetrate the wood but now we're looking for build on top of the other coat of varnish that's now inside the wood. Okay, we're okay. good. And give a little, a little stirry stir. Mrs. Peterson, I have a brush for you. Yay. I have a brush for me. Just kind of get the brush saturated. What should I be looking for? How do I know I got good coverage? And the varnish itself is, is clear, so really you, you are looking for a glossy sheen. You want to know that you've got 
enough on there to get good, good protection. You don't want to be seeing brush strokes and things like that. If you have enough material on there, it should flow out and actually look, uh, look real appealing. And if you've got brush strokes, it means you've applied it too lightly. You'll probably have to put a third coat on. One last point I'll mention here is as I'm brushing this side, I'm putting drips on the other side. So before those have a chance to set up and look ugly, just flip that over, give that a little brush, and then you can put it back to where it's gonna cure with the shiny side up. Depending on your time and temperature, a lot of times you can leave this sit for you know half an hour to an hour, come back, flip them over. Your varnish will still be good at that point. The pot life uh, is, is quite long on this varnish. So you could come back with this side being tacky, flip it over on your, your uh, table here and continue to apply the second side. Looks like our second coat is on and we're going to let that cure for a while. Once that cures up, we'll know for sure if it needs a third coat or not. Just by looking at it, you can tell if it's dry or if it, you know, if you're good to proceed. It's covered. And yeah, then we can go ahead and get them put in the elevator and horizontal. So awesome. Yeah. We'll see you on the next one. You want to help me with the wood? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say wood at all, am I? <laughs> Get your shit together. <clears throat> this segment, we're going to... <laughs> say, <laughs> say ribs, not wood. All right. So there's a few things to cover when it comes to the ribs going in the tail. <laughs> Can't work like this. I didn't say wood. <laughs> do I need to do this? Mm -hmm. Are you a professional? <laughs> no. I am a juvenile. <laughs> you may need to uh, actually straighten. <laughs> <laughs> the Finland birch plywood, which is actually a really stable pl <laughs> Stable, but broken. What the, did you set this? <laughs> did you set me up? <laughs> so I'm gonna go through and varnish. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I think I'm choking on my cookie. You have a cookie? You had I a like, cookie? I like that. I had a package of cookies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Cut. <laughs>